my phone died there. Um, so I was saying that a lot of online recipes um, seem to overly complicate things by having a two-step process of creating a leaven with a small amount of starter and then like maybe a cup worth of uh, sort of, of, of leaven, which then second step gets added uh, to a full mixed dough. I think it's also complicated. I've not had great results. I've actually had much better results um, with just simply using a large amount of starter and into the initial mix. Um, part of what you're working with uh, with sourdough is this tension between the longer the rise time, the more flavor you're gonna get as the byproduct chemicals of the metabolism of the yeast. But also one of those byproduct chemicals is alcohol, uh, part of that fermentation process, and the alcohol breaks down gluten. So if you let it go too long, the alcohol content actually breaks down the gluten and the dough becomes overly slack and you'll get like a very um, dense, dodgy, not a great loaf at all. So you really wanna try and hit this sweet spot, which I've found in this case to be about an um, eight hour first rise and a two hour second rise. It seems to be a pretty sweet spot in terms of maximum taste and minimal gluten breakdown from, from alcohol. So that's what you're working with. So the mixture um, is very simple. Um, I don't even measure really, um, and eat, but it's about three and a half cups of flour. And sometimes, you know, just to spice things up, I might use a bit of wheat flour, white flour, um, wheat flour or rye flour as well as white flour. But white flour is always going to be your bread and butter because um, white flour has uh, much higher gluten than wheat or than rye. And so even when you make a wheat or a rye loaf, it's gonna still be 50% white flour. So I, I, but I usually, most of my loaves are just simple white sourdough loaves. Um, and so I use about three and a half cups of, of flour. And um, you can, um, the bread flours out there are good. The gold medal, the lilies are cheap ones. I've had really good success with them. I don't think King Arthur is worth the money, um, but actually his little um, uh, hot take, the uh, Walmart's all-purpose flour I think has a, a, a very high gluten content and works excellent for, for sourdough bread. It's some of the best bread I've made. It's been with Walmart all-purpose flour. So uh, don't waste your money on the stuff that's too expensive. So got a flour and then you're gonna wanna mix in your salt and you want the salt to be distributed in the flour um, so that, because salt would kill yeast. It actually, it retards the metabolism and the growth of yeast. So I do, I do, I like a pretty salty loaf. So I do about a tablespoon Again, I'm just measuring in my hand here. Uh, and then the best tool for mixing your dough is actually the trusty butter knife. You can buy these fancy dough hooks, uh, but the butter knife works just fine. So I mix in my salt, uh, and then you're gonna mix in um, about, about a cup and a half of water. Um, the reason I keep saying about is because it's hard to give an exact measurement to me these things because your starter, the hydration of your starter is gonna vary a little. So to try and be too precise about the measurements and then have a different starter, you're gonna have a different ultimate hydration of your, of your dough. The, the texture is everything. So I've added some water, my flour, the water, the salt, and I'm gonna add my starter. I'm just gonna pour it right out of my starter jar. And I'm gonna pour in about between a three quarter cup and a cup's worth. So a pretty hefty amount of starter. And this starter, because it's been sitting in here metabolizing and brewing all its nice chemicals is really, Really flavorful, has that wonderful kind of fermenty smell. So I've got my three ingredients and my leaven, and now I'm just gonna um, mix this up. And if it's a bit too wet, you can add a bit more flour, and if it's a bit too dry, you can add a bit more water. But you're going for a, a, a soft Play-Doh texture. So I always begin with a knife, um, because that helps these things to congeal. One nice thing about sourdough bread baking is, yeast is um, one of the, uh, one of the most dominant of the, uh, I don't know what the category term is, but little tiny things like bacteria or whatever, funguses, and it eats just about everything. So your starter will, will never go moldy, um, and obviously wash your hands and clean your counters, but it's nice to know that yeast eats everything. So the yeast that's in here is what makes it uh, so healthy. So I, I mix it together with my, um, with my knife, and then once I've done sort of an initial cut once it's kind of mostly congealed. And here I poured in a bit too much water. So I'm just gonna get my hand with a little bit of flour on my hand, maybe like a quarter cup at a time. And then I'm gonna squeeze this together just to kind of mash it all together. So I'm gonna squeeze, just kind of pinch, I'm just kind of pinching and grabbing. And it'll stick to your fingers and that's fine. If you don't like getting dirty hands, 
the bread baking is not for you. <laughs> so I kind of want to clean the whole bowl, I kind of use my fingers as if it was like a mixer here to kind of clean my mixing bowl. And so just mixing. As Daniel Tiger says, mixer, mixer. And I can tell that this dough that I've done is a bit too wet because usually I just pour the water out of the faucet, but for this I poured it out of the um, mixing thing, out of the jug, and I added too much. So, you know, it's going to make a slightly larger loaf, that's okay. Just going to add another about a half cup of flour here, and I'm going to show you the consistency. Because you want it to be, it's soft enough that it does still just stick to your hands. But you don't want it to be hard, like a lot of the loaves some of us have you know, made from early bread books where it was three cups of flour to one cup of water. That's a very dry loaf. And the difference is, is that a dry loaf like that, a low hydration loaf, will make a very dense crumb. So of course a baked loaf has the crust and the crumb. And when we think of like sandwich bread, that's a very close crumb where it's like all together. But sourdoughs and sort of artisanal breads often have a very open crumb with big air bubbles. And the wetter your dough, the higher the hydration, um, the more big open air bubbles you're going to get, that nice artisanal look. But then also, if it's too wet, you'll have a hard time keeping a round boule-like shape, ball-like shape, um, and uh, it will kind of flatten out to a pancake-y kind of look, but it'll, it'll have the big air holes. So you want to find this balance. So here, now that, that feels about right. So I'm just going to try and show you, you can try and guess kind of the consistency visually as best you can, but it's like a soft Play-Doh that should stick together, but not too much. So I'm going to scrape off the excess with the back of the butter knife off my fingers. And that there is your dough. And what we're going to do is we're going to let that sit. Um, and a sourdough starter, the yeast is much slower than the commercial yeasts, which could have the first rise be like an hour and a half or two hours. It's very hard to get a sourdough to do its first rise inside of eight hours. Uh, sometimes it can even be as much as 12, but uh, so I found that, so yeast functions at its highest metabolic rate um, at the temperature just before it dies, which is about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So at like 140 is when yeast is really cranking out um, the gas and the yummy chemicals, but that would be too fast. If we kept it at 140, then you could actually do the rise in a couple hours. Uh, but I find that leaving out on the kitchen counter by itself, it's a bit too cold and I won't get a doubling by the morning. So what I like to do is I set my oven to the lowest temperature it can get, which is for my oven is 170. I get it to 170 and I turn the oven off. And then I cover this bowl um, with uh, just a regular dinner plate. And I put it in my oven at, that had been up to 170 and obviously dropped down a bit. And then that gives it an initial warmth and then it's a ceramic bowl, which by the way, always use a ceramic bowl because um, the chemicals of, of, uh, of bread will actually uh, erode a metal bowl. A uh, ceramic or glass, you know, same thing, um, is, is what you want. So the ceramic will, will retain some of the heat from the oven and it'll kind of warm it for that first couple hours, kind of give it a bit of a metabolic boost into its uh, first fermentation. And then uh, after that, we'll do the, the uh, I'll teach you the stretch and fold technique and the shaping for the, the second and final rise before putting it in the oven.